around the city and everything. Pray for uh, all the violence, all the murder and all that, that God continue to intervene and stuff and have control over that in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Any other prayer requests? Amen. If not, we'll go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. And let us bow our heads. Father, we come before you right now, Lord, thanksgiving, Lord, praise God. We thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made, God. Truly, it is your doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, God, to be assembled, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, you said in your word, Lord, how good and pleasant it is when your people, Lord, can dwell together in unity, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We ask, Lord, during this time, God, you see, Lord, exactly what each one of us has need of, Lord, even before we ask, God. Hallelujah, Lord, but we're asking, God, that you meet the needs according to your riches and glory, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Help us, God, to delight ourselves in you, God, knowing that when we do that, Lord, you will give us the desires, Lord, of our hearts, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Help us, Lord, to seek your will, to seek your face, to seek your plan, God, in the name of Jesus, God. You said, Lord, that we will, see, we will find you when we search for you, Lord with our whole hearts, God. Help us, Lord, be fully committed, God. Hallelujah, Lord, to being, Lord, to men and the women of God that you have called us to be, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask, Lord, that you open up, Lord, our understanding, God, during this Sunday school. In the name of Jesus, God, let something, Lord, be said into our heart and into our minds, God. In the name of Jesus, God, that will give us, Lord, the courage and the strength that we need, Lord, to face, Lord, the weak, Lord, that is coming ahead, God. In the name of Jesus, God, and the obstacles, Lord, that are coming to us, Lord, in the future, God, knowing, Lord, that with you, Lord, all things are possible, God. In the name of Jesus, God, if we just have, Lord, faith as a grain of a mustard seed, God. Hallelujah, Lord, help us, Lord, to walk by faith, Lord, and not by sight, God. In the name of Jesus, God, help us, Lord, to make your our faith manifest, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, by our works, God. In the name of Jesus, God, all of us in Jesus' name, by faith, we receive it as done. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, saints. Uh, the lesson for this week, if there's anybody that just happened to not be in the band group, um, the lesson for this week is God is in control. God is in control. The uh, scripture background, remember to uh, stream to Facebook, please, Brother Darrance. <clears throat> the lesson for uh, the scripture background for this week's lesson is Daniel, the second chapter verses 14 through 23. Daniel, the second chapter, verses 14 through 23. The memory verse for this week's lesson is found in Daniel, the second chapter and the 19th verse. Uh, the um, focus for this week's lesson is because God is in control, we can trust him to reveal his purpose and plan because God is in control we can trust him to reveal his purpose and plan. Amen. So we're going to start at Daniel, the second chapter, starting at the verse 14 verse. And then once we finish reading, we'll get into this week's lesson. Um, as always, uh, I know sometimes because we're uh, on for hour 15, hour 20 minutes, amen, certain questions, different things may pop up in your mind. Uh, you can either write them down to ask towards the end. We'll give time for questions. <clears throat> or you can put them in chat. You can uh, type them into the chat. And I will make sure that they're addressed at, this, uh, at the end of the class. And that's whether it's on uh, Facebook or um, in uh, Zoom chat. Put the questions there. I'll make sure that we uh, have time to address any questions at the end toward the end of this week's lesson. Amen. So starting at Daniel, the second chapter, starting at verse number 14. <clears throat> then Daniel answered with a counsel and wisdom, with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariot made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desire of the king that he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. 
Then Daniel went to his house and made the king known and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. These are uh, popularly um, better known by their uh, captive names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Verse 18 that they would desire, desire mercies of God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who have given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desire to be. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Amen. God is in control. Amen. Uh, just for um, a background on this uh, in Daniel, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, was having a drink, had a dream, and the dream was uh, vexing him. He really wanted to know what. Um, this dream meant this recurring dream. It vexed him. He wanted to once know what what this went. So he went to uh, what is called in the Bible the wise men uh, throughout the kingdom, asking them, you know, to tell him what this dream what this dream meant. And none of them could tell him what the dream meant. So the king became enraged. The king was enraged because none of these these wise men. Uh, could tell him, uh, had the wisdom to tell him, you know, what this dream meant. So he uh, made a proclamation to kill all the wise men. And this is the situation where we find Daniel uh, faced with um, in the passage that we read. Um, so um, he, because he knows that, you know, you know, they were uh, captives of the Babylonian Empire that, you know, if he killed, you know, all the wise men and, you know, they had a position where they were considered, you know, part of those wise men that were in the kingdom, they were going to get off too. So he uh, told, you know, his uh, companions, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of what was uh, going on. And they, you know, prayed and sought the Lord that he would give them the interpretation of this dream so that they didn't face uh, the uh, proclamation and the judgment of the king's wrath because his dream couldn't be interpreted. So God did exactly what they requested. He gave them the uh, interpretation of the dream. Um, uh, they went and you know, Daniel and went and told Nebuchadnezzar the dream and it wound up uh, first, the king was, you know, amazed. Um, then he um, gave praise to uh, the God of Daniel, uh, uh, Daniel and his companions, and said he was greater than all the other gods. And then he also promoted Daniel, gave Daniel a promotion. Um, now, um, this scripture is in the background of that God is in control. Many times, uh, various things that we go through, or that we face in this life on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it can uh, sometimes um, feel as if things are uh, going from bad to worse. The more we, you know, try to uh, and endeavor to do the right thing and, and things that are pleasing in the Lord's sight, it seems like you know there's all this opposition and it's constantly things that are coming against us. Uh, to uh, shake our faith, uh, to make us doubt, to make us question, to make us wonder, uh, where is God? Uh, in a very different situation, we see, you know, what is going on uh, right now all over the world with the pandemic. We see what is going on 
uh, in California, and even though it's you know not being as talked about as uh, much as it probably should should be, um, uh, what's going on in you know California, Oregon, uh, Washington, uh, now it's even in Alaska uh, with the wildfires. Um, this is again something that's never happened in our lifetime. This pandemic has never happened in our lifetime. These wildfires are something that has never happened in our lifetime. More, more acres have burned between California, uh, California, um, or California, Oregon, and Washington than I believe the, the total acres in the, the whole state of Delaware. So imagine the whole state of Delaware just torched and the fires are still going. You know, with, with with no end, with no end in sight. You know, where uh, God and unless God intervenes, um, you know, it will pretty much burn up the whole western uh, part of the United States, unless God intervenes to uh, stop the uh, spread of um, the wildfire, because it's a bunch of different things that have happened with the wildfire that that have. Uh, come together to make it so terrible with drought, um, drought, um, high heat uh, temperatures out there, record setting heat uh, during this time. And they're saying, you know, some people are saying, you know, it's uh, effects of um, global warming also. So we have these things that are going on. And I imagine, you know, we're here in the Midwest, we're sitting here, you know, uh, moderate temperatures, um, you never, not in my lifetime, I can't think of one. Uh, we've never had any wildfires here. Um, uh, we don't have uh, hurricanes here. Uh, we very seldom have uh, tornadoes here, especially within the city limits. Uh, usually, even when tornadoes come, they're in the far, you know, um, uh, suburbs and you know, uh, count border counties, Cook County, and in Indiana, they they almost. Uh, uh, tornado in my lifetime has never touched down in the city of Chicago. Um, uh, also, you know, we, we very seldom have earthquakes uh, here. So there's a lot of things here where we um, don't really experience it. But imagine, you know, you are one of the people that are out in, you know, one of these uh, Western states and it's just fire just coming. Um, I was reading a story about some people, you know, the fire was coming and they um, got in their cars, you know, to leave, different things like that. They they may have waited a little bit too late trying to keep their homes, different things like that, but they got in that car to leave and, and didn't get very far. It was just too late. It was just so hot, hot that it, melt, it melted the tires. So they had to try to get out and pretty much escape on foot. And um, Unfortunately, some of them didn't make it, but this, you know, just imagine it. You just, you, you know, you being just chased down by fire and everywhere around you is ablaze. Uh, so when we see these various different things going on and happening, it can make us question, uh, like, man, where is God? You know, what is really going on? Um, but we understand one, a few things we have to understand about God. Sorry, Saints. I don't know why I did that. Uh, internet has kind of been phasing in and out, out for some reason. And we just got an internet upgrade. So it's be upgrading the speeds and stuff like that. Didn't have this problem when it was slower, but now that we upgraded it, it had to be phasing in and out at random. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> uh, but uh, what I was saying, what, some things we have to understand about God. Number one, God is a spirit. Uh, God is, uh, now we know that the Bible says that God declares the end from the beginning, um, but we also need to understand that God is infinite. Uh, the Bible lets us know that in him, we live, move, and have our being. That means that all of, all of creation exists within God. 
all of creation exists within God. There is nothing that exists outside of God. All of creation exists within God. Time is a creation of God. God in his uh, essence, in his infiniteness, even exists outside of time. So uh, he is not subject to time as we are. Um, and because of that, he is everywhere. Part of his omnipresent, when we think of him being everywhere at the same time, um, that is true uh, with him being omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time because everything exists within him. But he's also every time at the same time. So he's in the beginning and in, in, uh, at the end. He's in the past and at the future, as well as the present, all simultaneously at the same time. Um, and because of that, you know, we, we being subject and bound by time, we experience stuff as it happens. We experience the future just like now. You know, we're experiencing this for the first time as it's happening. But in God, uh, all of this has already happened. All of this is already done. Um, so, you know, we are catching up to it and his will is being made manifest in our eyes. But to him, he's already completed the work. Time is just processing and going, moving forward and making manifest all of the works and things that he's already completed. So nothing catches God by surprise because uh, everything uh, that has happened, is happening, or will happen, uh, is all happening simultaneously, has all happened simultaneously with God. Uh, so nothing can catch him by surprise. When it comes to him being in control, it, when we see all of these things coming, because we are finite and we are experiencing them right when they're happening, it can sometimes cause in us a uh, worry, panic, uh, um, uh, uneasiness. Um, that's why Jesus uh, admonished us that, you know, not to worry because we're not doing it. First of all, worrying, you're not changing anything. Worrying will not change anything. The only thing worry will do is uh, stress you out and affect your own health and mental uh, uh, state, but it won't change anything. But we uh he tells us to you know pray because prayer can change things because prayer is petitioning the one who uh is the source of all things to come into time and intervene in time uh on our behalf and not only intervene in time on our behalf but give us the patience to and the grace to trust that he is in control and he knows what he is doing. So help me to be, that there was a, uh, there's a, um, a prayer. I don't know who wrote this prayer. Uh, people used to have pictures of it and different things like that uh, on their walls, different things like that is, is popularly called the serenity prayer. Uh, and, uh, and the main uh, gist of it is, you know, help me to um, help me, help me in the things that, uh, what I don't understand and what I cannot change help me to be at peace with it. I can't change it. <laughs> I can't do nothing about it. Help me to be at peace. In other words, God, help me to be at peace with your will being done. Even though I may not understand it, uh, why this is happening, I may be perplexed. Help me to be at peace um, with your will. Help me to trust that your will is what is best for me. God has left us things in his word to help us to be reassured um, that uh, his will is what's best for us. Um, one of the things he says, if we delight ourselves in him, now we quote this all the time and sometimes we, you, we, you know, we probably uh, explain it in the wrong way, but um, if we delight ourselves in him, he will give us the desires of our heart. A lot of us sometimes pray that, you know, man, if I delight myself in him, he will give me whatever I'm lusting for. That's how many, that's how most of us, you know, uh, uh, um, have heard and sometimes still think in that scripture. If I delight myself in him, whatever, you know, I got my eye on that I want for myself, then he going to give it to me. 
That's not what that means at all. What that is talking about is if we delight ourselves in him, if we meditate on his law, his word, and he, he is his word and his word is him, day and night, then our desires will get in line with, will be conformed and get into line with what his will is. It does not mean that we're going to get, you know what I'm saying, what we think, because understand something. The Bible says that we don't always know how to pray as we all. Some of the stuff we want, we shouldn't. Some of the things we want is not for us. It's not for you. You ain't supposed to have it. You ain't supposed to get it. Some of them things you desire, and I know, you, man, I just see it. I believe God bless them. No. The answer is no. See, sometimes when we, when we pray in different things like that, because we hear the scriptures, that all of God's promises are in him, him, yes, and amen, we interject ourselves into this. That, man, everything that I want, God has said yes and amen. No, it says all of God's promises. Some stuff he ain't promised to you. You just want it. You want it. You 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 are daydreaming about it. You, you thinking about it. You planning it for it. But God don't want it for you. So if God does not have it for you and does not desire it for you, going and asking him for it, the answer is going to be no. Sometimes the answer to God's prayer is no. Because it ain't for you. But if it's, if it's something that he has promised and it's in his will, then yes, then you will get it. The Bible clearly lets us know that by faith, we know that when we pray, God hear, hears us. And if we pray according to his will, we know we have the petition that we desire of him. Brother Darren, there's somebody here trying to get into uh, breakout room three. I'm putting it in the chat. <clears throat> we know that we have the petition that we desire of him when we pray according to his will, not when we pray our own will. And we can, we do have, because God has uh, um, given it to us, we do have our own will. Every time we sin, whose will are we doing? Whose will are we fulfilling? We're fulfilling our own. We're uh, operating and walking and doing things according to our own will and what we want to do. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away after his own lust and enticed. And and uh, um, the Bible says that, you know, uh, lust, when it is going to finish, it brings about sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings about death. So all of us, you know, have our own uh, wills, and then we have the will of God. Even Jesus being God manifest in the flesh, he was fully man. So he had a human will. Even though he was God manifest, he had a human will. He did everything he did for us as a as a man anointed by God. He did not do what he did for us and accomplish what he accomplished for us on the cross as God. He did it as a man anointed by God. He did it through his human will, submitting to the will of his father. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he had his own will so much that in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was sweating blood because of all the pressure, it's because he did not, and most oftentimes we don't think of this, but God, Jesus did not want to give his life for you. That was not his will. He wanted a different way. He prayed for a different way. Like, man, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Uh, let somebody else do this. Let, let them, man, let them burn. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He didn't think that. But he definitely thought, like, man, if there's some other way to uh, uh, accomplish this, let that be done. I, I ain't feeling it. I ain't feeling this thing. Uh -uh, because he fully knew, even though he was uh, – um, even though he had his human will, because he was God manifest, he fully knew and understood what was coming. He knew what was coming. He knew the pain and suffering that he was going to have to endure. And he like, I ain't with it. <laughs> let, let me do something else. But then he humbled himself. The Bible talks about, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it was not robber, robbery to be equal with God. But he presented himself as a servant and humbled himself, even unto death. 
the death of the cross. He had to humble himself. In other words, he had to let go of his will. And that's what he said, which we famously know. He said, not my will. So he had a human will too, but thy will be done. I'm going to do what I came to do. Even though I'm not feeling it, I'm going to do what I came to do. I'm going to accomplish it. So his love, so his love kicked in and canceled out his own uh, uh, selfish desire at that at that moment in time to do something to let uh, another cup come, let somebody else drink from this. Uh, it got to be a different way, even though he knew it wasn't. So during the different times and different things that we go through in, in, in life and different things that come towards us uh, and come at us, we are constantly seeking to do God's will. Um, and sometimes, we, unfortunately, we fail. But God is in control. When the Bible talks about having done all to stand, stand there for. Because sometimes we look at people in the Bible, you know, um, um, outside of Jesus, the apostles, different things like that. And we look at them as almost being like superhuman, like, man, man, how could they do all this stuff, man? You know, man, it, it, it's difficult. It's hard. I, I don't know if I can do it. But they were men and women just like us. They were natural men and women just like us with the same passions, the same flaws, flaws and shortcomings as we have. That's why the Apostle Paul it revealed that in that when he said, having done all to stand, stand there for. In other words, I done did everything that I tried to do to figure it out and get out get out of way, uh, get get out of going through this thing, get out of having to stand in the face of this adversity, get out of going through this uh period of, of suffering and discomfort. I did everything that I could think to do, but and none of it worked. So now that I, all, none of that all, none of that stuff worked, now I'm just going to keep on standing. Now I ain't got no choice but to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because I everything that I tried to do and think of that I thought may have made, made this, you know, um, me have to, me having to go through this thing, um, it end quicker or me avoiding it altogether, none of it worked. So since none of it worked and I'm still here in it, <laughs> now I just got to depend on God. Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. The only help I know, I, I done, everything else ain't working. So I just got to stand here and wait. And all of us get to that point. At some point, if we're walking in with the Lord, all of us will get to that point where, hey, man, I just got to depend on Jesus. But that's something that we have to learn to do. It's not something that, that comes natural to us. What comes natural to us is doing the opposite you know, and trying to do things ourselves. No, I'm not trying to trust you. I'm trying to be in control. I'm trying to get my way. That's what comes natural to us. But God is in control. Another scripture that he lets us know that he's in control is another very fa famous passage of scripture. Um, in Jeremiah, when he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. We have to understand that Jeremiah was like, man, I'm quitting. Like, mm -mm, I'm going to do my own thing. Nope, this ain't going away. Hey, you told me to say all this stuff, and I'm saying it to these people, ain't none of this stuff happening. I ain't with it. I'm, nope, uh-uh. So he was very discouraged because, you know, uh, um, again, and I, I, I want to, while this is in my mind, bring this up, that part of it is has to deal with, you know, our individual ego. And we all have one. God, oftentimes, when he calls us, he puts us and he sends us into places to get your, to, that, that will break your ego down. Because this ain't about you. So I'm going to send you into these places, you know, and put you in these positions where your ego is going to have to be broken that in order for me to be in my power to be made manifest, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of me. But I got to get into these situations. These situations are designed in order for God's glory to be made manifest. I have to get into it so, so deep that when I come out, ain't no question that this was God that brought me out of this thing. Because I did everything possible to not be in it. To, to avoid it, to get away from it, and I'm in it anyway. 
So when God brings me out, it makes it manifest that this was God's doing. It's the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. So when another scripture that it comes that he uh, gives us to reassure us that he is in control. Because you know, even you know, uh uh we live in this natural world and we see all of these things. That's why he admonishes us to walk by faith, not by sight. Don't go with what you see. How things look are not necessarily the way things are. The Bible says that by faith we know that the world was framed by the word of God. And the things that are manifest are not made from things which are visible. So everything that we see, hear, experience, you know, feel in this life, it comes from something that you can't see, something that was not, you know, uh, 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 made with hands. So he gives us this other, this other passage that says, all things work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. All things, not all good things, not all things we, we think we want, not all things we think are, are good, but all things are working together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. That's again, his giving him giving us reassurance that he is in control. Things come to us and they catch us by surprise. They don't catch him by surprise. Things come to us and they blindside us. And you don't hurt it, but it's not catching him off guard. And if he is allowing it to happen and everything that happened is ultimately working for my good, that means even when things I don't understand come, then I have to pray for the grace that God for, of God to help me to trust him and to hold on and to believe that he is in control. This thing did not come to destroy you. It came to make you into what God has ultimately designed and destined for you to be. And you got to go through it. This is part of your making process. It did not come to break you. It came to make you. He is in control. He knows exactly what each one to see. We think of, we quote these scriptures all the time. But we don't really think of it. You know, um, God knows exactly what we have need of even before we ask. He knows what we have need of even before we ask. And he's a promise to supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. But we don't think about that when it comes to getting our butt kicked. Sometimes, and it's a different times for all of us, but all of us at some point <laughs> need our butt kicked. So we don't get beside ourselves. So we don't do it because we will take our eye off the ball and get to feeling ourselves and smelling ourselves, letting our ego rise up. Uh, I'm feeling myself now. I'm smelling myself. We will let it, we will allow it to happen. We will allow it to happen. But the Bible says, who the father loves, he corrects and scourges me, me beat, getting your butt kicked. Every child whom he receives, every child. Now, there's not a child. He said, what child is it that the Lord chases not? If the Lord does not chasing you, you are not a child. So if you are a child of God, part of what you need and uh, you and I need at various different times in our life, and as long as we are here in our right man and God still has work for us to do, is some more coming at various times according to his own will when we need it, we get our butt kicked. It's just go with the territory, but you're getting it because you need it. See, when we when we think of God supplying all our needs according to His riches and glory, we always think of something that you know feels feels good. It's just blessed, and I love this. Thank you, God. Let me give you the praise for this wonderful thing that makes me feel great that you have given me. No, although He does give us those things too, but that's not the only thing we need. Even the hard times and the different things that we go through that hurt us, they come because we need it. When we think of the Apostle Paul and the thorn in his flesh, even though the Bible never lets us know exactly what the thorn is, God let him know 
uh, uh, in, in no uncertain terms that that thorn, you keeping it because you need it. And he said, and he even, and, and after he asked three times for the Lord to take it, and the Lord told him, no, don't ask me no more. You keeping it. My grace is sufficient. He finally, uh, he finally admitted to himself. He like, look, I'm keeping this thorn so that I don't become exalted behind, beyond measure. He even admitted like, man, I got an ego. I got an ego and God is keeping me with this thorn to keep my ego in check so that every time I start feeling myself, start smelling myself, start getting beside myself, thinking it's something about me, this thorn is there to remind me that no, it is the Lord working in you both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. He left this thorn to let me know that I need God. God ain't just somebody just, just a kicking it, buddy, just to come along as a side. And, you know, when I get tired, like, man, I ain't got it no more. Okay, geez, you can take the wheel. You know, I'm kind of tired right now, but you can take it right now. God is in control. In control. I know many of us do various different things in our life. The devil uses with his old lying self. Um, the devil can come and buffet us and have and, and saying things to us and making us believe uh things um are worse than they actually are. God can have us believing, oh well, you know, um, God uh, had this dream to do this, or God placed it in my heart to do that, but um, I'm too old now. Uh, I'm too busy now with family. I'm too, you know, uh, I'm, I don't look good enough. All type of stuff that the, the, the devil can come and make a, and put in our head and get us receiving it. We receiving these lives, receiving it. But God is in control. I want every one of us to know that whatever state you are in right now, I don't care what it is, whether you on a mountaintop and you like, man, this is great. This is the days of heaven on the earth. Or whether you like, Lord, deliver me from this. But whatever you are right now, it did not take God by surprise. God was not sitting up in heaven and this time that has approached you right now. He's like, man, I did not know that this was coming about. I didn't know that they were going to be in this situation Oh my, what am I going to do for my child? It's just so, you know, blindsided. So I didn't know this was coming. No, God knew it, it was coming. And if you in it, if you are a child of God and you're in it right now, the situation the state you're in right now could not have happened any other way. I need you all to understand that you got to stop beating yourself up about the past. And you can't change it. You cannot change it. And if it was changed, you would not be you. You'd be somebody else. So everything that has happened in the past to bring you up to this point, this day, this time, right here, right now, could not have happened any other way. Does that mean that, you know, uh, bad decisions and mistakes that we have made in the past that we shouldn't endeavor to, you know, once we learn better to do better. No, that don't mean like, well, God knew I did all that messed up stuff. And because he knew I already knew I was going to do all that messed up stuff, then it must be okay. No, and I ain't saying that. Don't, don't get your head busted. Remember, I told you about the butt kicking that we all need sometimes. Uh, but it does mean that all of those things that have happened even my poor decisions, God used them to work together for my good to bring me to this point right here, right now, so that my best days are ahead of me, not behind. What did the Apostle Paul say? I Because you can't change the past, and I need you all to understand this. When we trust that God is in control, we stop beating ourselves up about the past. That's why the Apostle Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind. I, I can't change it. Now, if there's somebody that I hurt or somebody that I did wrong, I can go and apologize, but I, can't, I can go and apologize. I can repent. I can change and do things better in the future, but I can't make you forgive me. If somebody did something to me in the past that hurt me, that wounded me, I can forgive them. 
but I can't make them repent. I can't change the fact that they hurt me and what they did. So what am I, what am that goes back to what I was talking about with that serenity prayer, you know, helping us to be at peace with things that we can't change. You can't change the past. You can't do nothing about it. Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, wherewith shall you be clothed? For the Lord knows you have need of all these things even before you ask. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else you need will be added unto you. He said that the evil of today is sufficient for itself. You can't change the evil or the good from the past and you certainly and but you can make you can uh, with what you have learned make better decisions to going towards the future and you can handle things better when you understand that everything was working together for your good the the person that you are right now the person the person that um your family your friends uh co-worker different things like that know and love if you could change if you change some of that stuff in the past that you beat yourself up over, you wouldn't be you. The parent, the sibling, the 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 son, the daughter that you are today, you wouldn't be that if you change something that happened and transpired in the past. And God is so much in control because He uh, knowing the end from the beginning that. Even us being right here, right now, here in this lesson today, he already purposed for us to hear this right here today because there's somebody that needs to let go of the past. There's somebody that needs to stop beating themselves up. It's somebody that needs to, you know, wash their face, put on their clothes, stand up, set their eyes towards the future and being and accomplishing what God has said for you to do and to be. Because you can do it. God does not put anything in your heart that you can't do. Now, he has a permissive will and he has a sovereign will. Now, ultimately, his sovereign will is going to, done, going to be done. What is in his sovereign will, you are going to do it. Now, how you get to that point of doing it... <laughs> You right now today, you're going to you playing a role in whether that's going to be very difficult and laborious and you're just going to be limping into the future or if you're going to walk into the future. You you you, you have some some uh, say so on that through his permissive will where he's letting you choose. But you can't go into the future and accomplish the things he has with you for the future if you keep and we keep focusing on stuff that happened in the past. You can't change what happened this morning. What happened this morning, you know, before we got on here, has already happened. You can't change it. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. You know, I know all of us things like, man, if I knew then what I knew, know now, I'd change. No, no, no. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't be me. I wouldn't even know who to recognize myself if I knew then what I know now. If I wouldn't ch change anything in the past. My, so, so the things that I like and the things that I don't like, didn't like, I understand have worked together for the good, uh, not only of me, because understand, everything does not just work together for the good of, of just you individually. It did, but it also worked together so that you could be a blessing to somebody else. So that you can be so, so that the you that you are today was is, is perfectly set up and planned and orchestrated by God for you to be able to help somebody that He's going to bring into that He has already brought into your path, or that He's going to be bringing into your path, and you would not be able to help them, and they would not be able to see God through you if you didn't go through all those things that you went through. If you didn't, if, if, if all the hurt, all the pain, all the tears, the disappointment, if you didn't have all of that coming up to this day, you could, would not be ready and fit to do what he had for you in the future. Forget what's behind. God is in control. 
And the control that he is in is working together for your good. It's to give you hope in a future. It's to give you an expected end. It is said that he is working in us to will and to do of his own good pleasure. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into our hearts the good things, not the bad things, that God has prepared for them that love him. All those things are working together for the good of us who love God. It ain't working together for the good of everybody. It's working together for the good of them that love God and us who are called according to his purpose. God's will will be done. Even, you know, when it comes to, this can even give us some comfort. Even though um, during the last presidential uh, uh, election cycle, I'll be honest, I didn't like either one of the candidates. Now, I did vote, but I didn't like either one of them. Um, but I understood whoever came into uh, uh, power that it was in the will of God for them to be in power at that, at that time in this season. I don't have to like it. See, most of us think, most of us are confused and think that because uh, um, that God is uh, bound by And I'm back. Oh, crazy internet. I hope we have this fixed by next week. Amen. But God is not sitting around with any trepidation about whether we like what he's going to do. When is the last time, I mean, maybe somebody here, he did do it. When is the last time he came and asked one of y'all, hey, man, are you okay if I do this? Did God ask you if you wanted to be born African American. Did he get your approval first? Did he ask you if you wanted your name to be what it is? Do you like this name? You do? Oh, you don't like that? Let me say. Did he know? Did he ask you what your what 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 you what hair color you wanted to be born with? What eye color that you wanted? Did he ask you that? He didn't ask you any of those things. He does what God, God does what he wants to do and what he does. And we understand that what he does for us as his people is for our good. It's according to his own sovereign will and counsel, but it's working for our good. The Bible talks about the vessels of honor and the vessels of dishonor. Us being vessels of honor, it says that he created us, that he could show the riches of his, his inheritance and his glory, um, his love in the saints. So he created you for good things, but there are some bad things that you have to go through in order for the good to be made manifest. Think about this. God, who declared the end from the beginning, before he even created Adam, before he created mankind, that's what Adam means. Adam is the Hebrew word for mankind. You know, uh, before he created mankind, the Bible lets us know that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. So before he created Adam, he knew that Adam would fall. He knew that Adam would rebel, but he created him anyway. The Bible says that we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Says all the saints were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Before he created Adam, he knew that Adam would fall. When he created Lucifer, he knew Lucifer was the enemy, the adversary. That's what Satan means. Satan means the adversary. But he created him anyway. Knowing all of these things, he created him anyway. <clears throat> 
But <clears throat> even though he created he created all of him, uh, created Adam knowing he was going to fall, created Satan, uh, Lucifer knowing he was going to be Satan, that just goes back to the fact that God is in control. It's just showing how much control God has. Even when things are done that are outside of his perfect sovereign will, he already knew they were going to happen. He was, he's using it to work together for a good and a future that he has planned for us. Think about this. Will we appreciate God the way we do now if we never uh, knew what it was to uh, be hurt? Will we, will we appreciate feeling good if we never knew pain? Will we appreciate what was right if we never knew what, what wrong was? Will we appreciate uh, um, will we really appreciate love if we never knew fear? I know a, a bunch of us think the opposite of love is hate, but the opposite of love is actually fear. Fear is the opposite of love. Hate is a manifestation of fear. But we, what, what, what we know those things, what we understand it, what we appreciate it. But we appreciate being healed if it never, if we never knew what it was like to be sick. So even in the, 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 the unpleasant things that we are experienced, that we have experienced, and if we continue to live in this life, we will experience, it is still designed for our good. So that one day when we see him, we will have a greater appreciation for uh, what he has done for us, in us, and through us that he did not have to do. Understand that, that you are human, just like everybody else. You are, you, you know, you, you, we are, we are uh, people who have been saved by grace. It's not because we were just so God. It was because God, in His own sovereign counsel, selected you according to His own will and His own purpose. Not because you know of something that you individually did. It wasn't that He saw, looked now through eternity, He saw that you were so nice and sweet. Nope. What none of that. When we think about Noah, when we think about Noah, we don't even we a lot of times we don't think about the fact that he was just as wicked as everybody else. All those other people that, that were mentioned by uh um when God said, I look down on man and their hearts are on wicked and evil continually, he didn't say except Noah. Noah was <laughs> thinking on wicked and evil things just like the rest of them. But the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And grace means what? He gave Noah something that he didn't deserve. Unmerited favor. I'm going to have, I decided I'm going to have favor on you, even though you are just as wicked as all of these other ones that I'm about to destroy. But, 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 but so I won't destroy mankind totally. I'm going to select one, you, and I'm going to have grace on you and your family. And then because, because of the grace of God, then Noah had the opportunity to obey what God told him to do. And that was imputed to him for righteousness. But it all started, God initiated the relationship with grace, with somebody who did not deserve his grace, his loving kindness, didn't deserve it at all, just like each and every one of us. We're not here because we deserve it. We're here because God is in control. And God does what he wants to do. And God, for whatever reason, decided to pick each and every one of us. God, for whatever reason, decided that on September 13th, 2020, that we would be on this electronic Zoom line right here, right now, uh, on Facebook, streaming live, uh, uh, listening to this Sunday school lesson about how much he is in control. And it couldn't have happened any other way. Everything that has happened and transpired in the past in our lives led us up to being right here, right now, at this time. 
Now, this is the thing about it. We under the, we already understand that it couldn't have happened any other way. But really, I don't want each and every individual to really think about this. With everything that's transpired in the past to bring you to this day, would you really change it? Knowing that if you did, you may not be right here right now. You don't know where you'd be. So what you'd be doing? So would you change it, even if you have the opportunity to? I know for me, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I wouldn't change it. Because I wouldn't be right here right now. I wouldn't have the understanding that I have. I wouldn't have the appreciation that I have. I wouldn't have the love that I have for God. I wouldn't have the love that I have for the saints. If anything in the past changed and worked out differently. I don't know what would I would be doing today. Hey, I mean, I need me walking with the Lord today if anything in the past had changed. So, it's, it, it, so you know, lamenting over the past and beating ourselves over that, you know, and uh, um, only is really a rooted from a lack of understanding of how much God is in control. His will will be done 100%, whether we like it or not. Now, it's best for us to submit ourselves to the will of God because it will make things go a lot easier for us moving forward. But even if we even if we fight back, even if, I, if we let our egos get in the way, God's will is still going to be done. We're just going to get a few more lumps on our head, which we will need in the process. And this one Amen. <clears throat> so right now it's 1130. I want to give time for uh, questions and uh, comments. Sister Glenda, you got your TV on or something. You on oh, sorry. Small group of people. <clears throat> oh. Trump, who had no choice in the Amen. Mind. So if we have any questions, comments, you can make them at this time. Again, you get a chance break down two and twenty one. He give a wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Amen. This is uh well, let's look at the whole scripture um of Daniel two and twenty one. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. First of all, and this goes back to something I was just referencing earlier about the last election, but it's definitely true. Um, there is nobody in power in any area of our life, down from a boss at, you know, Harold's chicken <laughs> shift manager, all the way up to, you know, uh, presidents and kings of country. There's nobody in a position of power that was not put there by God to alter to accomplish his ultimate sovereign will in the earth. No one, whether you like the person or not. We look at this scripture in Daniel and this passage in Daniel, but we we fail to you know remember that the king that was coming to kill them, Nebuchadnezzar, was a tyrant. But Nebuchadnezzar was used by God to kick Israel's butt. And they needed their butt kicked, and to teach them a lesson, and to set them up, you know, for some things that were coming and transpiring in the future. When the Bible talks about Cyrus, the king of Persia, he calls Cyrus my anointed. Um, in the history books, you can look him up as Cyrus the Great of uh, Persia. Persia is modern day Iran. If you look him up in the history books, you know. Even though God is calling him my anointed and all this different stuff, and he gave money to Israel to go back to uh, rebuild what we know as the second temple uh, in Jerusalem and different things like that. Uh, when you look at the history of Cyrus, outside of, outside of Israel, everybody else pretty much hated him. They like this. They called him a tyrant. Like, man, this dude ain't got no sense. He's horrible. Because Israel was like, man, he's great. We love Cyrus. 
but it was working together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Now, when it comes to him giving wisdom unto the wise, understand, understand something, and knowledge to them that no understanding. Everything, everything, 100% of everything that you have, God gave it to you. 100%. Is the scripture saying that he gives wisdom to those with a certain level of wisdom? Was it saying that those that those that are wise have wisdom from him? It's saying that those that are wise, those that are truly wise, that their wisdom has come from him. No, he does not give wisdom to a certain to those who have a certain level of wisdom. All of us are dumb. What does he call us throughout Genesis to Revelation? What does he call us? From Genesis to Revelation, over and over again, Old Testament and New Testament, what he keep calling us? He, it ain't wise. He keep calling us sheep. Sheep, you a sheep. You a sheep. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. Wait a minute. If he is shepherd, I'm a sheep. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. They follow me. He keep calling you a sheep. There ain't nothing innately wise about you. you we dumb. <laughs> so any wisdom and knowledge that we have is because he's given it to us. All of the advances in technologically, technologically and, and, and in industry uh, that we see and we are constantly seeing progress um but mankind even medical and different things like that they wouldn't know all any of those things and this is saved or unsaved we wouldn't have discovered any of those things we haven't invented anything we just discovered some stuff that was already in the earth it was already there but god put it on uh the heart and the mind of a person at a, at the in in uh, according to his will at the right place, at the at right time to make it become manifest. Everything that was in the earth created airplane was in the earth 3,000 years ago. But it just wasn't time for it. Everything that was in the earth for us to be over the internet right now, and I'm on video and us on Zoom and conferencing and Facebook, all of this different stuff was in the earth already 5,000 years ago. It was already there. He just, at the appointed time, he put it on the heart of somebody to put it together so that we could be right here, right now, able to communicate during the middle of a pandemic online, which they couldn't do just 100 years ago during the last pandemic. They couldn't do any of this. They would love to have all the different stuff we have now to be able to still communicate and connect during the middle of a pandemic. So everything that we have, 100% of it, Everything that you have is given to you by God. That's why, once again, by grace are you saved and not of yourselves. Lest any man should boast, it is a gift of God. Everything, 100% of everything that you have and everything that you are was given to you by God. Your breath, your life, your heartbeat, your body, your intellect your sight, your hearing, your ability to understand and reason, your hair, <laughs> your skin tone, your children, your spouse, your house, the food that you have eaten or, or will eat today, your clothes, everything, 100% of it, you all, all of it you got from God. There's nothing that you have or will have have had or will have in the future that has not been given to you by God. That's how much in control he is. The you that you are right now, God, God gave you you. Ain't that deep right there? God gave you yourself. You didn't even give yourself yourself. God gave you gave you to you. God is in control. Amen. Any other questions, comments? That's deep. Ain't nobody else got a question or comment. Amen. Praise God.
Is it any, uh, I don't know if there's any questions or comments on uh, Facebook, Brother Darren. If it is, please uh, put it in the chat and let me know so that I can address them if there ever are. <clears throat> Amen. God is in control, saints. So because God is in control, because God is, is, is in complete and 100% control, when we get into those times where, we, you know, we, you know, and there's nothing wrong with being discouraged. It's nothing wrong with uh, 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 feeling pain and being disappointed and being hurt. But during those times, it will help us to overcome them and continue to press forward when we understand just how much in control God is. And if we trust him, he's saying that everything he's doing, everything he's doing, he's doing for our good. Bible says he created all things for us to enjoy. Bible says that he it's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. He's doing all of these things for our good. And when we stand strong uh, in the Lord and stand strong in faith, it pleases God. It pleases God when we trust him. Without faith, trust, it is impossible to please him. You know, I, I know we often think about, you know, when we see Jesus, how excited we're going to be uh, when we finally see Jesus face to face and, you know, how even thinking about it now, we get choked up, we get emotional, uh, we shed tears of joy just thinking about when we would get to uh, see him face to face. But do we? Uh, I think that we don't understand that Jesus is just as uh, uh, excited and anticipating seeing us as we are seeing him. He's just as excited and anticipating us seeing him as we are seeing him, and us being in you know uh, uh, not just in spiritual fellowship, but also able to uh, see him face to face and touch him and be in physical interaction with him. He, he's just excited, excited uh, as we are. He anticipates it just as much as we, as we do. Uh, but his plan has to be uh, fulfilled. Uh, but he's just as excited. How can I say that? Uh, often when we think of this scripture in Jude, uh, we're thinking about just us. But when the Bible says, uh, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless, faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. In that passage of scripture, the exceeding joy is talking about is not ours. It's his He's presenting us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. He's, he's excited about presenting us before himself. He has exceeding joy. He ain't talking about our exceeding joy, and, but and we don't have exceeding joy, but that's not talking about our joy. It's talking about his. See, a lot of us, you know, we don't understand that when, when what we call theologically as the rapture, or the catching away of the church, when he comes and he takes the the uh, church, he takes his bride um, out of the earth and we go to meet the Lord in the air. We all think about that time where you dream it like, man, we're going to be shouting, we're going to be singing, saints will be praising, saints rejoicing up in glory forevermore. And we thinking about how we're going to be shouting. But some of us, you know, we're going to take a time to look and see what Jesus is doing. And while we all shouting, he going to be shouting with us. He ain't going to just be standing there receiving it like, yeah, it's all good. No, he's going to be dancing too because he fired up too. Just as happy to see us as we are to see him. God is in control. Amen. If we have no other questions or comments, amen. We will go ahead and uh, end. <clears throat> 